Good morning, everyone. We're here on the outskirts of Braunschweig, my hometown, just about five kilometers down this way. I used to be a soldier 35 years ago. And at that time, 86, 87, we were still in the Cold War. That meant that here, about just 30 kilometers further east, behind the Iron Curtain, were more than 300,000 Russian soldiers and even more soldiers from the Volksarmee, from the Eastern German Army, ready to go into the battle. And this field that we see here in the background would, might have very well been a battleground. Well, thanks God it didn't come to that. And I pray and hope that it will never be a battleground. But just about a thousand kilometers down this way to the east, the Ukraine war is waging. It's going into the second month and as I speak, the NATO leaders are leading in Brussels to decide how to respond, how to further deal with the crisis. But as Christians, our hope is not in NATO, but our hope is in the Lord. So friends, I pray that you will be blessed, that you will know the Lord better, as we go along. And I really start, really encourage you to, to get your Bible out, to dig in, to study for yourself. Okay. Yeah, there are many good examples in the Old Testament and in the New Testament for good leadership in crisis. And, um, but I want to pick one, um, the King Jehoshaphat because he was um, facing a situation that is very similar to what the U Ukraine has been facing over the last weeks or for over a month now. And at his time, he was king of Judah, the southern kingdom. And it says a vast army came against Jerusalem. So and the army was so great, so powerful that it looked hopeless to go to war against them. So King Joseph had, um, did a great thing because he didn't just um, throw in the towel and gave up, but he also wasn't as foolish as to go to war and try to try to win. But instead he inquired of the Lord and he called for a fast and asked his people to pray. And he also called an assembly. In this assembly, he starts with a prayer. You can read about it in Second Chronicles 20, verse 1 to 12. I'm not going to go through the whole prayer, but I want to point out that, that he starts the prayer with, not with saying, Oh God, please give us victory over the enemy. But he starts with exaltation. He, he, he says, God, you are Lord over all the nations. All kingdoms of the earth belong to you. And he reminds God of what he has done in the past of who he is and the promises and the covenant is given to him to the people of Israel he says God you have you've, you've have given us this temple and you said if we come here and we we pray that you would hear us and save us and then he ends his prayer with with a very humble statement and so he says Lord, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Imagine that a leader of a, of a nation today, or even just of a, of a company, or even a leader of a family, <laughs> acknowledging in front of his people that he has no clue what to do. And you wonder how people would respond. You know? But God responded it's like he, he loves a prayer like that. You know, somebody who is humbling himself and says, admits, no, no idea what to do, but Lord, you can do something if you want to. And God really does respond. He says, you know what? You don't even have to fight this war. This, this battle is mine. Just watch me. <laughs> And then he gives them a great victory by turning the soldiers of the enemy army on one another. So they, they, they're killing each other. He said it doesn't even have to fight, but they get a great victory. 
So the story of Jehoshaphat should really encourage us to put our trust in the Lord and to inquire of the Lord as well. And there's times when Israel did not inquire of the Lord and they just lost battles and wars. Um, so it's always a good thing to inquire of the Lord. But it, it's not about copying exactly what other people did. Yeah? The situation that Israel faced was different 2,800 years ago uh, than the Ukraine situation. You know? But it's the same God back then and now. Um, so we, we, we want to look when we read the Old Testament and the New Testament, we want to always look at the nature and character of God because that's what it's all about. Yeah? God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. The covenant changed. Yeah? So there we don't have a temple that we pray to or that we refer to when we come to God in prayer. But we refer to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Yeah? We don't come in our own name. We come in the name of Jesus. Because what he has done, we dare to approach the Father and say, here, look at this. You said, if we come in, in your son's name, you would hear and save us.